everybody, Martin of Flicking Feathers again today. Tying another bass fly today that's getting to that time of year. It's a good early season fly, but it works well all year. Um, it's sort of a fly fisherman's equivalent of the conventional angler's jig. So, as always, there'll be a materials list in the description, along with a link to uh, the Patreon page for anybody who would like to support the channel, that's always very appreciated. Uh, you'll get access to members only content and some giveaways. And some social media will be the link below as well. So, I've got my hook and my vice, this is an Allen jig hook. And I've got a tungsten cone on it, also Allen. Um, it's a size 1 on it. I've just started my thread and I've put a very short wrap there. Right, not much at all, like maybe a quarter of the shank length. Just to start it and then I'm going to fold my rib over the thread. Catch it, pull it in. And tie over it. Right, now I'm using a nylon rib here. Um, on the original fly it was wire. But I'm using fluorescent green 20 pound nylon which is much more durable and I'm going to start my body material this is just copper body braid catch that in the length of the body and wind your thread forward Right, and I wanted to stop. There's my cone. I need a wee bit of space in front of the cone and room for my tie in. So I'm going to leave myself an eighth of an inch, three mil, behind the back of the cone. Okay, throw a quick whip finish, or a half inch will do really. Get the bobbin cradle in. And then I'm going to saturate this with head cement. I'm going to wind over the wet cement. Overlapping turns. Don't worry if some of the cement comes out. I'm going to stop just short of the where I've tied that knot and I'm going to come back. About two thirds of the way and then take an open turn, then I'll come back up the the rest of the body. Take that away. And that's nice and tight, right? That's wound up another quite a lot of pressure. Okay, come over two or three times from away my waist, tied in, tie back over it a wee bit, half hitch there. Right, and you can see that I've got plenty of space here, as I say, behind the cone now. If the cone's sitting there where it should roughly finish on the finished fly, I've got two thirds of a cone clear. Right, and then you can tie inside the cone as well. Now, I don't mind coming over this again with a bit more varnish. Right, that will soak in and it will cohere with the stuff that you've wound over and it's kind of squeezed into the tinsel. And then I'll get my zonker strip ready for the, the tail and sort of meat of the fly. Now, I just like to have a look. At the, at the zonker 
get a stretch to make to sort of encourage the hair to lie nice and straight. And that lets you see the size of it quite nice. And I'm going to allow you a wee bit extra at the front just to create a bit of density in the hair. And then nearly a hook length at the back. So I've marked that with my thumb. I'm just going to separate the, the hair. Check it. That's fine. And for all the time it takes you to check that again, you make sure you've got the right length. Then, what I like to do is again, I'll hold this like that, and that's me. The, the strip is just coming to the front of the leather, and I've got. As I said, just mark it the length. For whatever reason, that actually didn't go in. Mark it the length. Come in right at the thumbnail. Make sure that's right on. Then I'll take the hook out of the vise and force that rabbit so that it's right down against. the braid get it back near vice nice and secure see how everything's sitting now short my button thread again I'm going to roll this slightly towards myself so that it's at a sort of 11 o'clock position if this is a, a clock face right and I'm going to just take a wrap over and the thread torque will pull it to the top right it's three tight wraps come in my thread, cut, trim away the excess, and tidy that up. Right, and you can open it up a bit, see where everything is, give that a pull. Just a wee touch. And then, just to make sure that you get a nice taper, I like to just come in and trim that rabbit strip to a point. Doesn't matter which which side you go for really. Then we can rib it. Now don't wet it. Um, a lot of people like to let wet the rabbit, but I prefer to keep it dry and just sweep the hair up. I'm taking a, a full turn at the back, and we'll just come through. But four turns up the body is plenty, maybe five. See what it looks like as you go. Now, make sure the rabbit's not getting caught and let the hair's not getting trapped. And I'm pulling that really tight. And you'll be able to see you're probably I'm flexing the hook as I, as I go, as I pull in, because I really want to secure this. Make a very durable fly. Come to the front, come across my thread. Catch it on the underside, right? Um, don't catch it on the the near side of the the top because it'll uh, it'll get in the way later. Right, and I'm going to tie back over it again on the underside of the fly. Come in, and the very back of your scissors will take that away. Maybe a bit long that, but we'll see. And again, I've still I've left myself plenty of space. Right, it's a very easy fly to rush the head, so be, be aware of that as you're going along. Right, check check your own head. Rubber legs. I've got some chartreuse silly legs here. 
but again up to you, you can use Grizzly or whatever, Olive, Red, you know, just make, tie them whatever colour you like really. Um, if there's a bass shop where you live, go and find out what the most popular colours of Jigger and tie them to look like that. So I've got three silly legs here together. I'm going to tie them on my side just about half a shank length behind the hook, behind the bend of the hook. Fold it over, do the same. Now your rip wraps don't need to be super tight yet, you can crank them here. And we'll come in, even them up, trim, right? Don't be tempted to make your legs shorter, eh, uh, longer I should say. Um, if you make them much longer than that, they just wrap around, get trapped in the, the gape of the hook, and then they're not moving, there's no point in them being there. Um, flash, I'm going to use some um, a flat flash right something like flash about I'm using Sebai tinsel hair blend and this is forest it's a nice color it's got some dark green a bit of pearl copper and gold I mean you can put as much flash in this as you like or as little I've got a fair bunch here I'm going to tie, tie that on my side About the same length as the rubber legs, and then I'm going to fold it back on the opposite side. Just fight me a wee bit here. There we go. Tie it back and and make sure the tie-in point is right back at the where the rubber legs are, so, are tied in. You don't want it to be creeping forward. Wait that and set that in for the next fly. You don't need to worry about cutting the flash at different lengths because the rubber legs are in amongst them and it sort of keeps it separate, stops it clumping. And then we're ready for the last thing, which is the marabou collar. Now, at this stage, which Move the cone out of my way. Just drop that there to encourage it to uh, sit separately. And I'm going to get my super glue. And I'm going to coat all of this. Don't let it come up onto the, the rubber legs, it'll make them brittle. But just get all that thread, coat it there. Right, and you can tidy up a wee bit if you feel you need it on the wet glue. Now, at this point, I'm going to have one last look to see where I want my tie-in point to be for my marabou. So I'm just about right, just there. And I don't worry too much about this thread. I've super glued over it, and. Uh, it's, it's got to be hidden anyway. So I'm going to use mar marabou and this is a nice wee trick for these. If you use like a strong blood quill, you get quite a lot of bulk and it's very difficult to get uh, the cone head snugly back over the, the marabou. So what I like to do is use like an extra select, right? which is actually kind of what like most British guys um, when they're tying streamers and that, they use this and they strip it from the quill. So, I'm going to take some of this, it's got a honey olive colour. Reasonable wee bunch there. It's not bad. I'm going to 
wiggle this in here. Make sure I've got sort of covered the whole bottom half of the fly. Trim that. You can see that's a much smaller tie in than you would get if it was a blood quill. Uh, and then I'll take a, a medium olive or a dark olive, it's up to you. Um, what's a crap one? This one's nice. Same again, we've got to strip it from the quill. Roll it. See how it looks, that's nice. Come in. good. So, it's quite wet all the marabou. Make it quite wet, it'll dry in no time. Move that. And then, glue on the thread. Right, cover this up. Quick, quick finish. Maybe quick, or the thread will stick to it. There you go. I can push this back hard against the. Ah, that's fine. Just, I'm just checking. I'm going to put a bit more glue on in front of it, and then I'm going to push it back. And then to make sure everything's nice and secure, never got to come undone. So these flies don't. Oh, I'll lose a, I'll lose these an awful lot. So it's it's not that big a deal, I suppose. But if you're fishing these where you should be fishing them, you will lose them. We've just got to drop some head cement this time in there. That will soak into the thread wraps. Inside, right, and I'll stick it back in the vise. We're going to switch to a heavier thread, right? This is 140 danvils, still chartreuse. Maybe bright hot spots can make all the difference on some days. That super glue over there. And just build up a thread dam. Try to not let the thread slip forward too much. It will try. It will try to slip round the, the bend of the jig. But and then a bit more glue on my thread. Get that right up the back, onto the, at the nose of the cone there. I'll just touch it to take away any excess and dry it off. And then, oh, oops, I'll throw a whip finish in here. Three tons will be plenty because this is it's already glued. Trim that away. And then to stop any whiteness coming from the super glue, we okay. coat that in head cement. Just get the whole cone, you might as well. A nice shiny finish. And these cones have got a notch in them, so 
I'm just going to let some head cement go in there as well. And then I'll hang these. I usually just hang them in the bobbin cradle actually. Nose down to dry. And there you have it. That's uh, Bar's Meat Whistle. Really, really good bass fly. There's a chartreuse version that I had in, a white and chartreuse I should say, that I had in the ice earlier. Black and blue, black and purple, brown, olive, white. Tie a load of them. They work. Take lines, guys. Bye.